the youngsters at the Leukemia Baseball Card Shows that we've done. And we got one coming up at the Bethesda Hyatt on November 13th, so I want to see all of you there. Frank Howard, great to have you on Sports Call. Thank you, Ken. You're right, that is going to be a big show, November 12th and 13th, and it's in support of the Leukemia Foundation, and we're hoping for a big turnout so we can make this show a success. Uh, I'm sure that folks will be coming. We're expecting, uh, see, this is the third one that I've done. Uh, hopefully Mike uh, Piazza will be there along with Tommy Lasorda and yourself and uh, Mickey Vernon. I was talking to Mickey about six weeks ago, and... Uh, Oh, just uh, Cal McLeish and just so many of the guys coming down. It ought to, be a, ought to be a great day. Again, I'm repeating, November 13th, Bethesda Hyatt, 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, uh, Frank, before we even get into uh, this past season and what happened and all, in your opinion... Has baseball been done irreparable harm by what transpired this year? I We've always had a history of work stoppages, and everybody says the fans have had enough, Ken. Uh, they don't want no more. They're never coming back. But, you know, and it, they've proven not that you certainly want to play on their uh, uh, play, on, play with them because without them, we're out of business. But... If had our season been completed, had it been completed, over 65 million people would have gone through big league ballparks. And I think somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 million would have gone through minor league parks this year. So 85 million people would have seen a professional baseball game this summer. So you can't tell me the game is, 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 is suffering from a popular stamp, popularity standpoint. It is unfortunate because I think... I think everybody's willing to concede that that uh, there is there is money to be made in this game by both sides, ownership and players. And what the hang-up is, I don't know if it's if it's the uh, salary cap. I don't know if it's the elimination of the free agency after three or four years and prolong it to six. I, you know, Ken, being a field guy all my life, and I'm certainly not trying to evade that question. I've already answered the best I can answer it. Being a veteran field guy all my life, our game has transcended economically far beyond us old-time players. And you've got a general idea of what's going on, but you really have no nothing concrete that you can objectively evaluate in the situation. You know, the amazing part is I used to say I want the interest on what the players make. Now I want the interest on what the agents for the players make. Well, I tell you what, there's no question. I mean, in some cases, and I think in all sports, in some cases, uh, I think a, an agent is a good thing. Uh, but I, I, I think in the majority of cases, you're dealing with college graduates. You're, you're dealing with guys that have been brought up right by their by their parents, and they certainly should know what they want or or have an idea of what the the marketplace will bear. But um, you know, it, it, you've got some guys around this country that have done a great job. What has happened? I think you know your, your bona fide superstars have always been paid, and, but I think what really has happened is you've seen you've seen people be paid on the basis of what your bona fide super a superstar hits 30 home runs, he drives in 100 runs, hits 300, it's great. He's always going to get that money. That's an outstanding year. But then you get then you've got the people right down the ladder that have hit 250 hit uh, 10, 15 home runs, and, and, you know, they say, well, if he hit 30, he's making five, and I hit I hit 15 and then drove in uh, 70, i, I got to make, uh, I got to make uh, two and a half. Yeah. So it, it, it's, it's, I think it's kind of taken the, the, the uh, economic uh, the cost of operation in baseball and putting a little out of whack, and I think that's where a lot of the owners are suffering. Well, again, I have no problem. I think the owners, I think anybody who believes that uh, they are out of pocket money is, is bananas. In fact, uh, when the Mariners finally opened their books, or at least the books they opened, whether or not they're the real ones or something else, but even uh, they had amongst their losses was $13.1 million for depreciating ball players. So, yeah. you know, after, I forget now whether it's four or five years, one of these days I've got to dig into the law and find uh -huh. it again. Uh, if you pay in a, a seven year veteran a million dollars, that's a million dollar loss, when in yes. fact you and I both know it's not. But my point is that I, I think that's a management management problem. Going back into the 1800s, the major market teams have been threatening the smaller market teams. 
But in June, uh, the major market teams made the mistake of saying, okay, we'll need a three-quarters majority. And uh, the players are not going to sit for a salary cap because they see salary caps, hard salary caps, that is, mm. hard salary caps end careers as they have over and over in the NFL. I mean, there it is right there in their face, and they're not going to buy that. Well, uh, you know, you know, Ken, what the answer is, I don't know whether you would go with, I don't know if you would go with people out of your minor league system if it wasn't resolved. I mean, I don't know what ownership would do. I'll tell you what I think is going to happen if they don't have an agreement. You know, let us hope that wiser heads prevail. Players should give up arbitration. It's insane having somebody out of baseball to turn one of baseball players worth. Uh -huh. that, that's nuts, all right? They should surrender that. Uh, and the players, the owners should say, okay, forget the, the, the salary cap, we'll share revenue and, you know, we'll somehow get by and let's hope that our, that is basically a request for a salary cap as a statement by the owners that they can't control themselves or each other. Basically, uh -huh. uh, you know, stop me before I kill again. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's like Brantley today. Uh, I don't know whether you were, uh, whether you heard the story. I got to dig out the exact figure here. Uh, 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 Jeff Brantley, pretty good relief pitcher, right? Yeah. Two years, two and a half million dollars. Kind of hard to, you know, it's really kind of hard to convince people that you're in, you know, in serious financial agony when they do that. Well, you know, I I remember. I remember as an active player in in, in, in the late '60s, early '70s, and and uh, that's when a hundred thousand dollars a year was a major milepost for a performer. Then you start seeing guys go to 125, and even a few were making 150 thousand a year at that time. And they thought it was all the money in the world. Well, anyway, Bob Eddy, who God bless his soul, one of the great writers uh, in, in Washington sports history, uh, asked me, he said, Frank, he said, when's this going to end? And I said, Bob, I said, I really believe in the next in the next 10 to 15, 20 years in our business, you're going to see guys making a million dollars a year. Oh, you were you're crazy. You were a seer. Well, well, not really, but I, I, you know, I think when when your flood case went through, and then when your McNally and Mr. Schmidt case yeah. was successful in the players' favors, I think it just kind of opened it opened the opened the doors for free spending with those clubs that could afford it. And if they shared revenue like business partners do, then everybody would have the same amount of money, then it would be brains rather than bucks. Well, I, you, I think you're right. Then, then I think uh, you would probably have a little more of a uh, conservative approach to spending. Yeah. I tell you who I think has done a great job myself. I think the, the, the NFL has done an outstanding job of, of, of putting the league in many cases first before individual yes. um, uh, success, and not, not, not that that to me they're all they're all in it to make money. They're all in it certainly to be a successful franchise. But I think in many ways uh, Pete Rozelle laid a great uh, foundation there when he was thinking in terms of, of, of let's say 24 or 28 clubs as opposed to maybe just one club there. I, I, I can't quite you know describe what I'm trying to say, Ken, but I. I just do think, I think, I think they do a, a, a super job of governing themselves and their spending in the business. Well, what they did is they shared revenues yeah. long before there was a salary cap. They shared 84 to 87 cents out of every dollar, so you got equal footing. Hey, if you were not business partners, you'd be trying to put the other teams out of business, right? And that's not what's happening. Their partners share the revenue, guys. And I think it ends at that point. Yeah, well, I, I, there's no question about the, the clubs that are in the regional regional markets where the radio and television revenues aren't there, Ken, yep. I think they're going to have to go strictly from within their farm system, feeder system to develop. They, they can put free agency out of, out, of, out of mind at least till such time as they get to a point where, hey, they're that close to winning it all or getting into the playoffs of the World mm -hmm. Series. Then they, might, then they might take a shot at somebody. But I think you're, you're already seeing evidence of, of of that money that has been in the past spent for free agency in 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 the in the regional markets being developed into uh, being put into uh, good scouting signing good young athletes mm -hmm. and then signing good young instructors to develop those athletes so they get a flow of one or two 
prospects, bona fide prospects, every other year or so. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem with that is after they develop them, the George Steinbrenners and Peter Angelos well, step in and buy them. But there again, you, know, you you got a chance to keep them for six years. Yep. And that's what I'm saying. So you just keep turning it over, turning <laughs> it over. And if a guy does choose to leave you after six years or five years or whatever the ruling is are, boom, at least you, you still continue that pipeline of talent into your parent mm -hmm. club. Yep, I understand what you're saying, but if they shared revenue like the NFL, you wouldn't have to worry about any of this. Well, it's pretty tough, though. It's pretty tough, Ken, uh, in, in defense of your, your big market owners. It's pretty tough for them when they probably play in, paid inflated dollars for that franchise. Uh, the, let's say a franchise realistically is worth $75 million. They paid $125 million mm -hmm. for it. Uh, it's pretty tough for them to want to share friend, uh, share that, that revenue when they've got a big nut like that to crack. And uh, well, Why is it any different for an NFL team? Well, you're, you're, you're asking a guy I can't quite answer. It. Well, I, neither can I. I. I really don't know. Can yep. I couldn't answer that. But I know this, you, people that do have... That do have, that have negotiated the big radio and television revenues, I, I don't think in my mind are going to part with it. Mm -hmm. Well, then I think uh, they're going to have to open the spring spring training camps in February and say, "Come on down and see who shows up." Yeah, well, I, that's why I I, I I would hate that it would come. You'd hate to think that it would come to that, but. Conceivably, I, I think you're going to have baseball next year. Oh, I do, too. With, with what type of talent levels, I don't know. <laughs> yep, you and I both. Frank, is, is it, uh, you know, I've just reached the point where you look at the number of gross dollars coming in, and you figure five and a half billion dollars ought to be enough to keep a few thousand people happy. Mm -hmm. You know, and you go, it just, I mean, I see the numbers, and I can write the figures, but that has no intrinsic meaning to me. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it just doesn't have any intrinsic meaning to me. Frank, I've got I've got John on the line who's dying to talk to you. Can you take a minute with him? You got it. Hey, John, you're on with Frank Howard. Okay, thank you very much. This is John. I'm calling from Bethesda, Frank. Hello, John. Uh, I'm glad to talk to you. I can't believe I'm really doing it. I saw you hit your last home run at RFK as the Washington senator. And, uh, Ken, it was a tremendous game. The crowd just went absolutely wild, throwing things out of the stands and cheered for about 10 minutes. Well, you know, John, and a guy gets, uh, you know, you, you, I don't care who he is, he has a couple very special moments in his career. Yeah. And in, in, my, in my case, that was certainly one of them. I think the All-Star game that was played here in, in uh, 69, and, and then certainly if you go back to my pre-Washington days, there's the couple World Championship ball clubs I was associated with in, in Los Angeles. But uh, Washington, uh, Washington is, is, has been a great, great, has had a great, great love affair with his clubs. In many cases, those clubs weren't always strong clubs. But uh, they still have continued to support and have taken great pride in him. And, and you're right, John. It, it was a very special moment. It was sad to see Major League Baseball leave here. Sure. But I would not be surprised. And I had I thought after it left here, within a, a five to ten year period, it would return again, and it hasn't. But I would not be surprised with the state of baseball being what it is today. When you consider that the greater Washington area has three and a half to four million people in it, yeah. it has the highest per capita income of any city in this country, and really uh, um, has a media coverage that rates in the top five. Those are all three positive factors. I think if you had a if you had a separate baseball entity, there's no question in my mind they would certainly become one of the front runners in getting Major League Baseball back here, whether it be uh, an expansion club or an existing club that's in the process of move or transfer. Yeah, well, Frank, you predicted the high salaries. Maybe this prediction will come true. Let's hope so, because it's a great area, and and I uh, there's no question that. That, that, like I say, you know, everybody perceives of, of Washington D.C. Uh, as it was in as it was in the late 50s, middle 50s, uh, early 60s, uh, that of a southern sleepy city of 800,000 people. Well, I mean, anybody that sees our our, our our area today knows how how uh, uh, upbeat and how sophisticated it's gotten. And the growth factor here now, like I said, is three and a half to four million people in a greater area. Yeah, Even though demographically we're 14 
miles from point to point in any one of the corners of the city. We've expanded out 25, 50, uh, 100 miles in all directions to, to really be, uh, become known as what is the, the District of Columbia and its uh, nearby neighbors, municipalities, wherever you want to call it. Well, I remember, Frank, you were never one for taking vows or tipping your cap or anything like that. But the people yelled so much, they finally got you out of the dugout. Oh. I swear you had tears in your eyes. Well, very, very emotional, Mo. It's sad because, you know, I had my best years here, John. And uh, having your best years in the city, well, you know, you, a certain amount of, of your, your, your fiber, or your, your, your heart goes out to it. Well, you're Listen, like, John, it's been great. I'm glad you uh, called. And Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Right? Did you go to Ohio State? Yes, I did. You played basketball. Yes. I saw you play there. I was a student at Illinois. Oh, yeah. They had Georgie Bonsal and the Judson brothers. They had good ball clubs at Illinois. Ted, you wouldn't believe this guy as a ball player. Oh, yes, I would. The fans, the Illinois fans, by the time the game is maybe a quarter, a quarter and a half, they're cheering this kid, you know. <laughs> He's playing so hard. And, uh, you know, he was no Will Chamberlain, Frank, but... Uh, he had so much spirit, so much zest, and uh, the Illinois fans were cheering him. But uh, thank you, John. Great to remember that. That's going back a long time. Good luck to you. Thank you. God bless you. Hey, All right, John. You know, yeah. uh, Frank, that is the one thing, and I, you know, it's it's so nice to see. But the one thing fans will always appreciate is the great heart, the great effort. Whether or not the enormous talent is there, they really appreciate the heart. And that is one of the major reasons why I have such an incredible affinity for sports fans. I really do. Frank, can I beg your indulgence for a minute? I want to come back. I want to talk about the superstars of your era and the superstars of today. Okay? Be back with Frank Howard right after this. <laughs> And that's 432 WMAL. I'm Ken Beatrice. This is Sports Call. Frank Howard, my guest right now. Frank, wasn't it nice to hear from someone who remembers all those things? Uh, you know something, Ken. I'm not a guy that lives in the past. I believe in playing the day's game today. But it is. It's very nice when somebody walks up to you and hey, you gave me a thrill in this ball game. And... I remember you doing something here or there. It is kind of nice. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something that I don't think at this stage of my career that I need from a uh, from a confidence standpoint, but from just the sheer delight of having somebody appreciate what you've done, it's, uh, it's fantastic. And makes, I think, what makes you feel so warm and what should make you feel so warm because of all the good it things does. you've done... It certainly does. ...is that you brought some joy into the lives of people. I mean... What greater, what greater monument can you leave to your existence? Well, you know, it's. Uh, I think. I think knowing the, the that you have a a certain sense of fan appreciation, appreciation from your peers, uh, and having a reputation as being kind of a hard nosed, aggressive but a clean type player. I think that. Uh, I think that, that leaves a it, you know leaves a pretty good. I call it big league. Uh, uh, I call it Big League, Ken, and, and uh, it really is it, it, it's, its much more the way you interact with people than it is ability, and uh, your ability was something God gave you, and you maybe developed, but it's uh, it, it, to have that ability to be able to interact with the fans and with your teammates and, and with the people in your business, I think that's... Uh, that's the thing. It probably carries you a little bit further in the long run. Oh, I couldn't agree more. Uh, Frank, I'm just about out of time. In about 30 seconds, can you give me... Do you feel that the superstars of today and the superstars of yesteryear... Now, it's impossible to compare uh, athletes of different era. I think you do a disservice to both. But do you feel that each has the commitment to the sport that they've had. There's no question about it. Okay. I'm going to answer this in 30 seconds to give you one man's opinion. I think that contrary to what a lot of my peers feel, feel uh, that we have as many talented, great, skillful, entertaining players in baseball as we've ever had. But I do think they're spread out over more ball clubs, and as a result, you don't have your team-to-team -team depth that you had 25 years ago, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. But you say, well, well, well what could what, what could recapture that? You go back to you go back to 20, 18, 20 ball clubs. 
you'll see some very, very great ball clubs like competing against each other. Yeah, but you and I both know that's not going to happen. Frank, oh. I can't wait to see you on the 13th. Listen, we're going to knock them dead now, Ken. We need this, the community support, but we know we're going to get it. We've got some very, very interesting items for a silent auction the night before the dinner. Yep. And some great auctions and, and cards and things uh, for the card show that day. So Absolutely. Frank, i got to run, but the 13th, November, we'll see you then. Right now, give me two minutes here on WMAL. I'll be back to your calls. From ABC News.